All righty. Well, uh, welcome to a meeting of uh, the Revitalization Trust Fund and Needham. Uh, permit me to confirm that all the members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Carol Delimas? Yeah. Mary Ruth? She's back there somewhere. Marcus? Here. Kate? Here. Ashley? Here. Brad? Yep. And I'm Paul Good, the chair, and I'm here. <laughs> um, let's see. The open meeting um, of the Revitalization Trust Fund is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. As such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable uh, public access is afforded and the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Uh, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless participation is required by law. Uh, this, uh, this meeting uh, uh, will, not, will not feature public comment. Let me see if I got it all. For this meeting of the Revitalization Trust Fund, the convening uh, is convening by Zoom app as posted in the town's website, identifying how, public, how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some of the attendees participate uh, and, and that some attendees are participating by video conference. That would be all. <laughs> Accordingly, please be aware that other, uh, other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer or anything that might have uh, sensitive information. Anything you broadcast may be featured in the report. And on that, I think we can kick this off. So how'd I do? <laughs> all right. So let's start off by, um, uh, first of all, um, just saying that, uh, you know, it's, it's great to be able to have all of you back together again and, uh, and being able to, to uh, to catch up on all the things that we're doing and also to you know continue to contribute the things that you you've been doing uh while we've been you know off uh doing the rest of our lives <laughs> so um why don't i start off with the agenda items um we have an update on the from needham to the world project uh which is also a collab collaboration with the um uh, history center and and uh why don't i let uh kate talk a little bit about what she's put together for uh, you know, an outer space person for us. Uh, sure, so Paul has been incredibly patient with me. Uh, so I um, sent to him, so this is for From Needham to the World. Um, it's going to be the panel um, project that we're envisioning for the Needham Fine Wines um, wall. And the thought is, is that to the extent, I think every six months, that's the cadence that we're thinking, Paul, right? That we yes. rotate it every six months yes. um, so that it would highlight a Needham notable. So somebody who has roots um, in Needham, either they're born there or spent a considerable part of their life there um, and has gone on to bigger and better things and is noteworthy. And that can be people from recent vintage um, or more historic, um, figures. Um, and so we started off with Sunita Williams, which would be just a really wonderful um, person to highlight a woman, a woman of color. Um, you know, we're all probably um, sort of familiar with her background, given that the former Hillside Elementary, which I didn't realize she was actually a graduate of herself, um, but um, was renamed on the old Owens um, poultry farm site um, was named and dedicated in her honor. Um, so 
um, I did some um, research and put together, you know, text that's intended, you know, to be engaging and interesting and not necessarily particularly dry, but highlights her achievements, um, both in the past and, you know, her early, her connection to Needham, her achievements over the course of her career, um, and then also um, some links to high resolution images that sort of, um, you know, encapsulate those, um, the, the, the features of her career and accomplishments that we've touched upon in the write up. And then our visual designer will take that and massage it and integrate it into what would be the layout for the panel. Um, so it was a fun assignment. Um, as I said, Paul was very patient because I was woefully over the deadline. Um, but just really talked about, um, you know, yeah. her, uh, she was not born in, in, in Needham, but she moved here and spent most of her childhood here, graduated from Needham High in 1983. She was a Navy officer and then was selected by NASA. She has several records. She was the first person to run a marathon in space and to a triathlon in space. So she completed the Boston 2007 marathon in space in four hours and 23 minutes, which is insane. Um, yeah. And it's the first, um, the school, I, I think, is this really sort of. Um, I can get it. I think, it's great, I think it's a great person to really highlight as a kickoff. Um, you know, as I said, she's a woman, a woman of color. But also, this was the first public building in the town of Needham that was um, dedicated. Um, and named after a woman. Um, so um, just a real nice accomplishment. That's awesome. I mean, you know, I, and I know that um, one of the things that we're, we're going to, um, you know, the next stage of this is being able to take the incredible breadth of things that yes, she's it was done <laughs> and scale it down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> into, yeah. into these key things. But I think the fact that, you know, the, the ones that you just highlighted, I think are really, you know, key uh, bullet points for you know for the little. It's not bullet, yep. not going to be bulleted, but you know, for the for the yeah. little yep. piece that will go into this. Um, I also uh, I can give you an idea of something that we've, we've was the initial mock-up um, that uh, uh, we've done for the one for. Um, let me just pull this up. Let me see if I can do a I can do a screen share, right? Uh, if you enable me. <laughs> Amy, can, uh, can you give me permission to uh, do a screen share? Yeah, I'm trying to. Um, okay, here we go. You should be able to now. Alrighty. Let's see if you can see this. It's thinking. Yep. Can you see it? We can see your screen, but not it's just on the sort of zoom menu. Yeah, but it's not I'm not showing you what I want. Let's try this. Paul, I don't think you have enough tabs open. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Gravy. I was telling, uh, I was telling the, a few of us just what they were getting on, but I've had like nonstop meetings from from basically nine o'clock this morning, almost hour by hour all day long, and the result was a million tabs. So, uh, so I haven't closed some of them just so I could make sure I had enough bandwidth. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Um, oh, but, so yeah, the text would be a lot smaller. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this isn't you know necessarily exact size, but this is the the idea. It could be taller and get some more in there. Um, but that's the kind of thing that we're sort of yep. working with. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the one, for, of course, for Bob Larson. Uh, that's uh, almost finished. He's got a couple little things to do with it, but uh, um, 
but this gives you an idea. And one of the things I wanted to um, to ask you about in terms of this is this the, the way he took Bob from a picture and made him sort of you know stand out in the thing. When he did that, I was like, this is a cool thing. Yes. I mean, this is like you know, like you feel like you're getting to know the guy, you know. And I was wondering if um, you know maybe that's a, a a thing that we try to do to highlight each person. Like you get a picture of them, um, whether they're in a space suit yeah. <laughs> or, uh, you know, or whatever, and, and sort of use that, um, that type of uh, image in this spot uh, each time. What I are like you gonna that. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I like the feature a lot and having it be image heavy rather than text heavy is always an attractor in terms of what the objective of our our board is and the organization and then also this particular panel it will draw people so that they can read the little blurb no that's great and uh, what what about other people i know uh, some of you are muted but uh, if you can uh, just give me any feedback in terms you've got in terms of this this is not a completely finished piece but it's you know the template itself is basically the lower section that says robert fly larson uh, where that where the name goes is where the name would go from need them to the world, you know, is the bottom section. Beneath that, you probably can't see any of it, but that's basically just the, uh, that's the thank you to the sponsor. And it says the Revitalization Trust Fund, um, you know, in there and uh, just to, to, for the credit there. Uh, the uh, gold box, which could be a little bit taller and so on, um, is, uh, you know, is, is the text section. Um, so when people actually walk up to it, they can, you know, stop and, and read. Uh, but the rest of it is all really designed to be able to just be graphic images that you could see from a distance um, or that, that would draw you if you saw some of them below the awning because remember there's an awning that actually sits on top of this so you don't get the full height um, that is up into here from standing across the street but you will get from meet them to the world you'll get part of in this particular case bob and uh, you'll see some of the image and so on. And you know, part of the idea is to get people to be interested enough to walk over and check it out. So that's that's great. I love the background. That's great. Yeah, he uh, he got a really high res image of the uh, of the shot from the Earth, and we thought you know to tie the if we tie Stoney Williams into the first one that. It was kind of appropriate to be able to have the outer world uh, <laughs> view <laughs> of, uh, of the background, but this this would be the background is part of the template. So anything we arrange to it, you know, that's pretty much what it would do. It's a great template, it really is. That's a real that's a really nice template. Oh, am I still? Me? Great, great. Anyone else? Uh, any other comments? And this silver frame is basically the way to look. Uh, the frame here, um, the original one we presented to design review was actually larger. Uh, we actually scaled it down some so that uh, it had more of a reveal of the wall behind it. Uh, and so the dimensions of this are 12 feet wide and six feet tall. Hmm. And, and the, this particular, and the frame is called a snap frame and um, Basically, all all the legs of this frame, top, bottom, left, right, uh, snap open. You put the uh, vinyl material into it. It stretches flat, and then you snap the uh, snap all the sides down. And then there are some locking screws that will lock uh, lock the frame shut. And that's it. So being able to change the, uh, we wanted something we, where we could change the banners easily, you know, as the rotation goes. Um, and that uh, the, the frame's all made out of a, a aluminum. Um, so it's, and, and it also happens to be in this particular case underneath an awning. So, you know, as far as weather and that kind of thing goes, it should uh, be very long lasting. And these have been used in a variety of different uh, uh, places around the country. Um, with all different types of, you know, uh, different sizes of banners. So our belief, and we're able to work with um, uh, SpeedPro graphics here in Needham to be able to both uh, produce the final uh, image 
uh, and, uh, and, and actually do the installation for the frame. So once we've got this, uh, we've got the, uh, the SUNY Williams um, uh, image uh, redone or created, I should say, uh, which we'll work on over the course of the next probably four to six weeks. Uh, then I will take it, take that image and, uh, and this one to a design review, and we should have our first two rotations of the uh, of the wall, and then we'll start off on on uh, pulling together uh, who the next candidate might be, and uh, uh, hopefully Kate will continue to. So to how do you want that? What, what's your thought on that selection process? Would you like me to come up with? couple of options and then present it to this board to sort of winnow down who we should do next or exactly the list and then <laughs> and then we like just have it in the queue and I just work you know populate it as we can well I think I, I think the your first suggestion um, I think might be the best in fact that that you know there are 40 or 50 different people on this this list right. and, right. and um, it one of the things you know, we want to do is be able to uh, look at them and say, what what do we think the public would have the most interest in, and can we find content to be able to graphically uh, represent them? Yeah. Um, so, um, it, so working you know, with Mike and working with Gloria, I think, you know, for some of the folks who might be sort of more historic figures, mm -hmm. um, and Mike seemed to want to lend his research. Um, he said he thought it was a cool project and would be happy to help with research. So I might take him up on that offer. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, definitely. Cause uh, you know, the more input you can get the, you know, the more easily when you have more people uh, collaborating that you can get the information together more easily. And they'll oftentimes think of resources. Like, you know, uh, when she's referring to Mike she's referring to Mike Knighton and uh, he's been involved in the, um, in the uh, program that the high school has had uh, to be able to honor uh, people who have graduated from Needham High and then gone out into the world and done great things. Um, once, they've, once they've been out in the world for at least 10 years, that's one of the uh, uh, basic criteria. Uh, so, uh, you know, and at some point we, you know, we, we, we'll certainly have uh, people like Charlie Baker and who also graduated from Needham High um, and a variety of other people. At, but I think that we want to keep that mix of, you know, as best as we can of, you know, contemporary people and historic people. So that yep. people are really learning the depth of, of uh, so, uh, contribution that people have had. From, from why don't I put together a list for our next meeting that's sort of the next, I don't know, 10 people. Yeah, or even a top five if you want. Top to. five, yeah, I'll do that. You know, the next five, yeah, five. Because then we can just talk about those and and uh, yeah. see what people think. And yeah. and if when you're doing that, and the reason I suggest maybe making it a smaller number and that smaller amount is you can come up with five that you've done some research on that you can actually uh, validate that we can get content for. Yeah, uh, that would be that would be great. Cool. All right. Well, thank I, said, you. I said one question about the, yeah. the artwork. Is is that all original artwork? For like, for example, for this person here, was that all yes. created for this, or was it already did already exist? Oh no! All this artwork is, uh, is the artwork that he has done over decades um, for various things that he's done. Uh -huh. um, so, like the the cartoon pieces that are up in there, um, he was. He was actually the, uh, uh, the cartoonist for the Needham Times for uh, 20 years, I guess. Uh, he did the political cartoons for, for that paper all that time. Uh, he has a, actually a book that is um, a collection of all the cartoons that he's, that he's done um, that he, you know, that he sells and is at the historical time. The uh, ship that's in there was uh, his old Ironsides, and he was commissioned to be able to do uh, an image for that. In fact, when he told one of the things he told me when I was uh, talking with him was that that uh, he said it looks like I just went down there and you know basically drew the ship, 
but I went down there multiple times, but each time I would go, the tide would be at a slightly different height. And so I had to keep readjusting my drawing to be able to figure out how to take what is visible now, but not visible in another drawing <laughs> and composite them all together to come up with the final drawing. Mm -hmm. So I just thought it was interesting, you know, from an artist standpoint. Uh, the the uh, uh, two over the side, which happens to have a, a, a Sunita Williams on the cover and uh, of course, uh, Lady Liberty. Um, those are just part of the series of the Needham phone books, um, which, you know, they, they uh, got stopped uh, in printing about four years ago, I guess. Um, the Exchange Club uh, sponsored that. Uh, but he did dozens of those. Uh, on the left-hand side is the 4th of July banner, which so far, I don't think we're gonna get to put up this year, um, but uh, uh, we'll see as they get closer and, and more things open, but uh, it doesn't look like the 4th of July uh, fireworks and those kind of things may go off this year. So we'll see about that. Um, but, uh, and the one below is the 1711 banner. That was actually the banner that uh, he and uh, uh, Seymour Levy um, put together, uh, which was our first banner back in 2004 and still is part of the cycle. So, and the one in the center is, uh, Bob did the Minuteman image that was, that was uh, actually carved into the stone of the memorial for um, uh, uh, fallen soldiers who had come from Needham. So he has a variety of other things too, but you know, we can only get so much into the presentation and not make it look you know, too busy. Uh, and the story will tell some of what, uh, you know, what he's accomplished in that. Uh, and that's, that's basically how it came together. Any other questions on this one? No, but I think that um, everybody, thank you, Kate. Thank you, Paul, for doing that. That, uh, that all looks really great. Thanks. Great. Well, we're getting there. We're, you know, you gotta get kicked off first, but. All right, now let's see if I can pause the share. And that was not it. I can get off the screen. Well, for the moment, let me see if I can. Uh, stop share. There you go. Popped up. All righty then. So let's keep moving. Um, update on potential window displays. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, Amy has been very diligently working on um, is being able to help uh, make the downtown look beautiful, even if we have a, lot, a number of, of uh, empty storefronts. And uh, so she has been working with the um, uh, NCAC <laughs> to be able to uh, uh, be able to um, get art displays uh, wherever we can when the landlord, if, you know, if the landlords agree, uh, into the front windows of these uh, some of these empty stores. And uh, there's one going in. I think if it's not even already installed in uh, Lisa's uh, old location uh, on Highland it, Avenue. It was installed last Friday. Great. Yeah. So that's that's cool. And and one of the places that we're that uh, she's been looking at also. Um, is down where uh, like the Vita Needle building is, um, where there are several different stores throughout that area, which were uh, occupied by the closet exchange. And uh, since they've given up for the three spots over there, one of them has been um, uh, replaced with a, uh, a cell phone repair store. Uh, there's still an empty one, two other empty ones. <clears throat> there's one on the far right hand side, which is very small, um, which uh, uh, Vine Needle actually has just taken over to use as their own space. Uh, and right now the windows are just blacked out. Uh, but we're working on something um, that uh, uh, with the um, Historical Society, uh, the History Center and Museum, <laughs> that uh, um, uh, is a potential idea to be able to get some window uh, art into that spot, uh, if possible. And uh, 
but we have, well, we're just in the early stages of it. And, and, you know, we have to be able to come up with something that, you know, might, that would be worth presenting to the landlord uh, to see if he'd even consider it. Uh, so you know, that's, that's just sort of a, uh, a short version of what's happening there. But Amy is doing some, some awesome things uh, to try to be able to transform the windows into downtown and keep them look beautiful. And, and that's great. And hopefully there'll be less and less need for those because people will be clamoring to uh, <laughs> to occupy those spaces in the downtown. Uh, the update on the grant grant completion. Um, why don't I let uh, Marcus take it from here because he's got all the info and he's been the the master of the universe. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, so we applied for that Needham Arts and Culture grant late last year. Uh, and we were able to, we were awarded three hundred dollars uh, for the Needham Arts and Culture uh, organization. So we're really glad about that. We had, um, with the help of Paul and Carol, we're pulling together some the documents that they need um, in order to process that that grant opportunity. Um, and so we're uh, just completed that, and we should be receiving, um, you know, the grant uh, funds um within the next couple of months which is, is a really exciting thing um and it was you know we tried to uh highlight the banner project um that we you know because due to covid we had some uh loss of sponsorships so uh, we were able to get the needham arts and cultural um, organization to um help with um some of the loss that we had from that uh last year so that's one foray. Um, another one that we're looking at, we're looking at other grant opportunities. Um, so Carol actually has um, a list of, I think it was 250 um, organizations that could potentially provide grants to our organization. Um, and so working with Carol, I was able to, um, you know, look at uh some of those grant opportunities are from all over the country um and so we were able to narrow down it to the um, those organizations that are just local um we thought that um given our focus that it might be easier to apply for grants that had more of a, a local focus um and so right now we have two organizations that we could potentially apply for grants to um, one is the um, Alice L. Phillips Foundation, and another is the Paul and Edith um, Babson Foundation. Uh, so I think that the um, the period to submit a grant for the um, Babson Foundation just passed, but we could apply for a grant for the fall cycle. Um, so we'll be looking at that, as well as um, the Ellis, the, um, the Phillips Foundation has an opportunity uh, to apply for a grant. I think you actually have to um, be invited to uh, apply for a grant for that um, organization. So, you know, we're going to take a look at that um, and see if we can submit some information to them so that we can be invited. And actually, that's pretty typical for some um, organizations uh, where they say you have to submit information before you can actually uh, submit an, uh, an official application. Um, so those, those two opportunities from that, from that list. So that's pretty good that we had that starting point. Um, and then um, I over the week, I was able to look at some other grant opportunities um, that's in the area. Um, there's one from NIFA, the New England Foundation for the Arts. Um, it looks like they have a couple of grant um, opportunities that we could apply for that specifically for where they would be funding arts and culture projects. Um, um, there's one called, I think, Fund for the Arts, where they have historically funded organizations that provide, um, that partner with artists um, that are doing projects that beautify a community or that look to upgrade the the, uh, the look for community improvement. Um, and so that's definitely an opportunity that we could we could look at. Um, and then there's also um, the resilience fund that they have as well. That looks like that looks like a, 
a good chance, a good opportunity. Um, and then the, the last two are the foundation for Metro West is another one, um, as well as the Fuller Foundation. So we'll have to look at the, what um, organizations they've given to in the past uh, to see if you know we would be uh, would have a strong chance of getting a grant uh, from them. Um, but um, you know if we sort of plan it right and look at you know the timing in terms of submitting a grant application, you know, we, we could be eligible for a few, and this could be a nice revenue stream for us in addition to all the other stuff that we're doing. So, but that's, in the, that's where we are right now. Well, and, and uh, I can't thank you enough, uh, Marcus, for being able to pare down 250 down to, <laughs> down to just, just, uh, you know, a handful that, that, you know, met all the criteria that, uh, you know, that they were local, that they had similar focus to the types of things we we're, were wanting to do, um, and were still active in terms of doing what they're doing. Um, so uh, uh, I, I think it's, I think it's great. And I'm excited to be able to see what the, you know, the next steps are in terms of, of, uh, you know, the investigation, because I think once um, we have an opportunity to look more at uh, uh, and certainly, you know, in, when you're pulling it up, you'll be able to see if there are uh, examples of other things that they have have uh, funded. Um, so we can see how that might match up to some of the things that we're looking to fund. Uh, and that'll help us in terms of being able to tailor how we apply. So I think it's, uh, it's exciting. And this is, you know, our first foray into actually doing anything with grants. and. Uh, you know, this could be an, another opportunity to be able to fund projects, um, you know, significantly faster too. So that's great. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, I mentioned to you about the fourth sponsorship that, you know, uh, unfortunately they won't, uh, as far as they can tell, um, will, won't be uh, putting up their banner. Uh, you know, they, the, the, um, Exchange Club has, you know, raises most of the money to be able to do things like this, the pay the sponsorship of the banner and also to be able to run the fireworks and so on, um, based on the fact that the fireworks and all that is going to happen. And since that doesn't look like it's going to be the case, uh, you know, that affects us in terms of uh, um, their sponsorship. Um, so we'll have to look for other sources to be able to make up that, that difference, but uh, at least we have a heads up and we can, uh, you know, take action to do that. Um, the video shoots for April uh, that um, since the weather is, uh, is looking much more favorable, uh, this gives us an opportunity to be able to actually shoot uh, some of the uh, promos for the video, uh, the, for the uh, projects that we have uh, that are um, uh, ready for funding. Um, so we'll start that up in April. Uh, we talked about the other grant opportunities. Um, we covered Kate uh, in terms of her projects. Um, Ashley, just wanted to check in with you to see uh, what your uh, uh, time frame. I know we've had a number of things that have been uh, tugging at you for uh, the past, and uh, just wanted to find out um, when we might be able to start setting up the uh, email uh, system uh, and uh, make that happen. Yeah, that is um, that is next on my list. I am attacking that next week. I'm I apologize for the delay on that. I had some uh, close deaths in my family and elsewhere. Um, you know, just sort of in my acquaintance group. But um, I do apologize for the delay. And we're gonna I'm reengaging with that project next week and hope to have a substantive report to the board at our next meeting. That would be great, and, and you know, certainly, you know, my my condolences, and I'm sure on behalf of the whole committee that we've been, you know, just it's just sometimes these kind of things happen, and uh, you know, we all all feel for you. So, yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, coming, you know, out of it now, it, it's you know, it's looking better. But January was a was a rough go of it. So, thank you for for being patient with me. <laughs> No problem, no problem. Well, um, and you know what we can do is why don't you uh, let me know when we might be able to just do a uh, maybe a phone call or a Zoom call or something next week, 
um, maybe near, near the later part of next week, um, if that works for you. And then uh, we'll talk about what I've got in terms of the emails that I've been collecting um, and start and been starting to enter into the system. And you know, and you can tell me about the concepts you have for being able to put the newsletter uh, together uh, or whatever form it looks like that you think might be uh, really interesting and engaging to the people we're you know, gonna reach out to. So that'll be awesome. Okay, great. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Um, one, uh, which is just basically a, uh, um, an element for Carol. I know she can't see her at the moment, that's okay. Probably keeping her internet connection uh, connected. Uh, that um, uh, Amy had mentioned to me that although we keep notes and Carol, you know, Carol is a note taker and takes notes on these things that uh, we should probably, because since we're doing all these things remotely, particularly that uh, we should be uh, posting notes, posting the, uh, uh, the approved minutes uh, from the meetings um, on the town website in an appropriate place. And, and uh, we'll find out exactly where that is. And then after we've, uh, you know, approved the minutes, we'll uh, uh, continue to uh, to post. So we have that up there. So let me see if I have anything else on my list. I think we're pretty good. Um, any questions from any of you in terms thing. of things One we thing. should? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I contacted a lot of people about the uh, Ridge Hill. Oh yeah. And a lot of people remembered that there was such an organization, but there could not be now because I couldn't find it. I, I mean, I you know went through. I about I got about four people got back to me and said, "Oh yeah, so and so was a member of that." I mean, we had a list like this of people that were members, and uh, it must have disbanded when um, Ridge Hill became less and less user friendly to the community and I think that um, it, it was you know less uh, it, it, it there were just less people and also I think the people that were very involved in it it just it just petered out so that does not exist I well, was hoping you. yeah no that, that, that's well, it's good to know that anyway you know at least yeah. what it says though is in the past that there was enthusiasm for being able to uh, you know to be able to rally behind Ridge Hill and mm -hmm. you know, maybe with this project, we can you know relight that enthusiasm with a whole new group of people. I think you will. I really do because it's absolutely beautiful there, and they're not. I mean, I, I think they're going to tear down the house. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think they're tearing. So, but the grounds are really beautiful, and it'd be great if they could get like the Boy Scouts or whoever did that wonderful fit trail back in there and and got it you know revitalized. It's still there. The, the trail the whole yeah. everything's still there it just isn't in very good shape yeah. but um but it's a beautiful place to walk and i think and i i remember cross country skiing across the street with the other land that they bought mm -hmm. um you could go right down to the river there's paths and everything and on the other side of, of the street so i mean it's i i think i think it'll be really helpful in getting um maybe getting it revitalized and having people use it more yeah and i think um, from my understanding, um, that even if the house is being taken down, that the uh, the barn, uh, mm -hmm. the town is, you know, is, is focused on being able to do renovations to it. And um, I know that there's been some discussions of, of potentially getting uh, the uh, arts and culture um, organization also connected, maybe doing something connected with it. And I'm sure there are other people who will be you know, interested in, in, in things like that once it's a, you know, an, a viable operating um, spot. So um, there are there, at least that gives an opportunity for, you know, focused activities to show up out there right. and, uh, and have a building to be able to do it in. So yeah, they need the building nice to serve hot chocolate. <laughs> People were cross country skiing up there in the winter. It, it was yeah. on weekends. It was, you know, they, they had a whole thing going on there. It was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So, so we'll see. And, and once we get this, um, you know, the video shot, uh, then we'll be out actively promoting and we'll get to, you know, see if we get people coming out of the woodworks to say that, you know, they want to be able to fund the project. And I think so. And make it happen. So, and 
that, you know, as soon as we are able to launch, you know, something where they can actually see this, that, uh, um, you know, then we can actively use our new email list <laughs> to be able to <laughs> make sure that we've reached out directly to the people who have been supporting us. So I think that's, I think that's great. Um, Brad, uh, you've been a little silent. Uh, any, uh, any input or thoughts on any of the things that we've talked about today? No, I think everything's looking good. One thing I'm working on, and it's been taking me a little while, is to um, uh, put together a, uh, my company can now do passes that go in people's Apple and Android wallets. So we could actually do one that we send out to our supporters and, and uh, donors. So they have it on their wallet and then we can send them push notifications when we have updates, when we have new videos, when we have things like that. So mm -hmm. I'm on mocking that up and I'll send it around as soon as I have something done. Oh, that'd be great. I think it'd be very interesting to, to see how that could integrate with the, you know, with the email campaign. And because uh, mm -hmm. if people will, people, do, if people decide they want to be able to opt in on that, um, then it's an indication that they're much more, uh, they're more highly engaged than most people. So that's right. That's a really positive thing. Great. So that's it. All righty. Well, thank you. Anything else, uh, Carol? Do you have any uh, other items or have I missed anything that? You think I should basically cover? <laughs> if you're in there, you're muted right at the moment. Okay, you hear me now? I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you've covered most everything. I was waiting for Amir uh, to uh, talk about the Ridge Hill thing. I was just about going to say that if she hadn't. So that was great to clarify that. And uh, yes, because I know you were looking also to see if there was any right. Anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, so that was okay. So I think we've covered the waterworks. All righty, that's great. So let's let's see if I can uh, properly end the meeting. Also, <laughs> 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 so. Uh, uh, as chair, I would like to uh, to move that um, we conclude this meeting of the Revitalization Trust Fund and ask for a second. 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 All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Say aye, and I say aye. we'll see you guys later. It's official. All right. And bye thank everyone. you very much. And Amy, as bye always. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Amy. Thank you, tremendously. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Have a good night, Have a good everyone. Night. <laughs>